Retinoscopy is often performed without the foropter, especially with children. Trial frames can be used if the child is cooperative enough, or the lenses may have to be handheld, especially with infants. Turning all the lights totally off in the room and making barking or other noises to attract attention will also help with infants. Some retinoscopists like to use so-called retinoscopy racks for the refraction of young children, especially for examination under anesthesia in the operating room, where complete trial lens sets may not be available. In this case, each principal meridian is neutralized with spheres only, and the results are usually recorded in the form of an axis cross. If the streak in the vertical meridian neutralizes with plus 4.50 sphere, subtract one and a half diopters of plus sphere for the working distance and write plus 3.00 for the vertical axis. If the streak in the horizontal meridian neutralizes with a plus 2.50 sphere, write plus 1.00 for the horizontal axis. Note that axis labeling is being used for this usual retinoscopy diagram. Power in the meridians is not being labeled, for the power would be 90 degrees away from the axis locations. The spherocylindrical form of the refraction would then be written plus 1.00 plus 2.00 times 90, with the cylinder being the difference between the two principal meridians. One of the best time-saving applications of retinoscopy is in over-refraction. Holding up plus 1.50 spheres before a child's glasses, with a child looking at a distant target without drops, is the quickest way of confirming that the glasses are correct or are close enough to correct that they don't need changing. Over-retinoscopy can also be performed with greater accuracy of axis settings with trial lens clips on the glasses. This is especially useful when refracting over high power glasses where the over-refraction technique is so important in controlling the effects of vertex distance and pantoscopic tilt. If retinoscopists had all the expertise and experience of Jack Copeland, they could use estimating techniques without lenses to come very close to the best correction. Copeland used neutralization by moving back and forth, enhancement of the reflex by spiraling, and filament focusing by dropping the sleeve and moving close. All methods to estimate in the various ranges of refractive correction. Instruction manuals for his retinoscopes provide further explanation of these estimating methods.